This fantastic looking stretch of the River Itchen is perfect to demonstrate some nymphing tactics and I'm going to show you my absolute favourite. This is a French leader setup on a 10 foot 6 for a three weight rod. I've got two tiny little bugs, no fly line, just a mono setup and I'm going to prospect up through this pool to see if I can catch some trout and grayling. Now there's no fly line on my reel, just backing and 22 feet of tapered monofilament leader. Tied to the end of the mono, I've got this thing, which is floating braid, about two feet of it, which I've made into an indicator. So the idea with that is that it floats on the surface. You can hold it above the water surface to detect takes. And below that, I've got two flies tied on a metre of tippet. My point fly, the one that's at the bottom, is a tungsten beaded nymph with a tiny little silver bead and a red collar. And on the dropper, I've got this thing. This is designed to look like a gamorous, a freshwater shrimp. That is 50 centimetres away from the point fly. Now the routine with this is to make your way up the river, prospecting likely looking holes and casting to any fish you might see. Now that grayling I had a couple of minutes ago, I sight fished. I saw it moving around, definitely feeding in the current, threw the fly to it and it took straight away. So I'm really optimistic we're going to catch a few fish this afternoon, which is very exciting. I'm desperate to get fishing and I'm off that way. So come with me and we'll see what we can catch. So because you're not using a fly line in this technique, you can't cast miles upstream. It's not what it's about. This is a slightly different method. This is about being in touch with your flies all the time. And it's a very, very positive, very busy method. Your hands are busy. You're casting constantly, working that fly line upstream, trying to catch fish. Now the way it works is you cast upstream and as you're doing so, you lift the rod tip slightly to put tension on your line so that that indicator lifts off. And the second that indicator does anything, whether it stops, whether it moves, whether it jags, you strike. So let's talk a little bit about how you cast this setup, because it is different to casting a fly line. The rod is specifically designed so it will load under minimum pressure, but not in the same way that it would if it had, say, a three weight fly line running through it. This is a mono rig, so the line itself has no weight at all. The only weight comes from the flies on the end. So the way you cast is to use the rod tip a lot more. Essentially what you're doing is feeling it hit the back, so you feel it tap when you reach the top of your cast, and then kicking it with a little flick of the rod tip to just throw those nymphs upstream. The mistake a lot of people make, I think, is trying to cast too far. This is a method designed for reasonably close range fishing. So several rod lengths ahead of you, just about four or five, is about all you're really after. And then it's just a case of lifting that rod tip and staying in touch with that indicator. The key to it too is tight line. You don't want any slack in your rig because the second you get a take, you want to be in touch. And anything that affects that indicator, you strike out, just like that. Oh, I think I just dropped a fish. And you can tailor it to fit the type of water you're fishing in. So today I'm in quite shallow stuff. I don't need very much weight to get down. But you can fish this method in extremely deep water. Four, five, six feet. Really heavy nymphs, tight lining getting those fish that are sat down in the really deep holes. Right, now the next thing I want to talk to you about is a bit of watercraft. So let's break the river down into its component parts and work out where the fish are going to be. Now where it's this shallow, of course, you can see the fish sometimes. But let's look at this ahead of us. We've got this glorious old tree, which is just the perfect place to provide cover, a bit of shade for some fish, and also remember, some terrestrials falling off the tree, landing beneath. So this is a kind of an area that I'd expect to find a few fish. We've also, over on the left-hand side of the riverbank, got a little bush, which is causing a bit of disturbance on the surface. Again, another area that I'd expect fish to be sitting back and just waiting to feed. Now, if you look at the surface of the water too, we've got quite a lot of broken water in front of us. It's ever so shallow. So if it's broken on top, that tells us there's disturbance underneath. And where there's disturbance, there's cover. And that's where the fish will be. So this is just a, an exercise really in navigating your way, prospecting if you like, those areas that look fishy.
big fish on. This is a really decent sized grayling. I've just seen its dorsal fin flashing in the water in front of me. Wonderful colours in this gorgeous light. Look at that. This is what chalk stream fishing is all about. Lightweight rod, really light leader, tiny little flies, great big fish. Oh, stunning. Look at this. You know, I knew there'd be fish in that broken water up there and that's so satisfying when you, you think out a problem and you think, well, where are they going to be? And they are there. And that sort of watercraft will serve you well wherever you fish. Now, it's important with these fish not to let them get behind you because what you don't want to be doing is pulling them up the flow. And that one is safely in the net. That's a grayling well over a pound, which is a, just a wonderful thing to see. Put them over to the slack water to release it. Just slip it over the side of the net. And away he goes.